Hello and welcome to a shock the fourth wall. It's Halloween time, my friends! The standing guard to prevent Christmas from seeping in even earlier. The time to cut loose and show off our love for the dark and the macabre. The time for spooky specials and people dressing up like ghouls to talk about horror comics while giving me the finger from across the room. I do that all year round anyway! And it's also the annual season to talk about a horror franchise over the course of a few years. Right now, we're in the middle section of talking about comics based on The Ring, the Japanese, and sometimes other countries, franchise about a ghost girl who haunts a videotape and crawls out to kill you seven days after you watch said tape. Or, like, two days afterwards if it's Sadako versus Kayako. Or any time period, if it's Sadako 3D, or any of the sequels that care more about psychic powers than the aforementioned haunted videotape. Speaking of, today we're talking about the third volume of Ring Manga translated into English, Rasen. Okay, Rasen, or Spiral, is... A confusing, nonsensical, really idiotic situation. The first two manga were just straight-up adaptations of their respective films. Makes sense. But then you have this one. Rasen was the first sequel to Ringu. And when I say first, I mean they made both movies at the same time, and then for reasons known only to Japanese film executives, they released both at the same time. It is one of the most baffling decisions I've ever seen in relation to movies, and it only gets stupider as we go. The title is appropriate because it just spirals out of control. The choice makes sense only in the degree that they realized that Ringu was gonna be a hit because of the popularity of the novel and previous TV movie. But releasing both at the same time? I've heard it was a double bill, so at least it wasn't actively competing with its own first movie. Though how accurate that is, I can't say. They could genuinely have just put both in theaters without connecting them. But they further made the decision that the movies would not be made by the same team. So we have two different screenwriters and two different directors, and they were very clearly on different wavelengths. See, here's the important detail that we really have to accept moving forward. The novels that this franchise is based on are... dumb. Incredibly dumb. They might be well-written, they might be more acceptable as novels than as movies, they truly could be an enjoyable experience, but the overall story that the original creator of this franchise, Koji Suzuki, wanted to tell is just goofy and dumb. The novels are more like weird pseudoscience mystery thrillers than horror stories. In the original novel, the bare bones ideas are there. Cursed videotape, you die in seven days, there's a mystery behind what actually happened, but the devil's in the details. Or rather, the lack of devil. See, in the original novel, it's not even clear if Sadako is a ghost or not. She doesn't even show up to kill you like in the movies. You just have a heart attack and die. Criminy, even Ring Kanzenban, which is much more faithful to the book than Ringu was, had Sadako show up to do the deed. She was naked and holding a baby for stupid reasons, but at least she showed up. And we already discussed in the review of the first manga the uncomfortable decisions around Sadako's death in the novel, plus the whole mutated smallpox spread through VHS tapes thing. But oh, that's not the insane part. When the third book, Loop, came around, it turns out that the events of the first two novels actually happened in friggin' virtual reality! That, by the way, is why the terrible Dreamcast game, The Ring, Terror's Realm, seems like it has barely anything to do with The Ring. It does, but it's based on the novels and not the movies. Although I'd really love to know if those novels also contained the infamous sound effects or Dalid jelly seen in the game. Anyway, the point is, the team behind Ringu decided, this is stupid and would make for a wholly uninteresting movie, let's focus on the cursed tape, change some of the character dynamics, and just make it a frickin' ghost killing people with the tape. And apparently, no one gave the people making Rasen the memo about all this, since they decided that they'd just do a straight-up adaptation of the novel with only the barest of changes. Otherwise, aside from recurring actors between the movies, they feel like they come from completely different film series. 
The tone is wrong, Sadako is wrong, Ryuji's character is wrong, and it spends way, way too much time trying to tell us about the science of the curse and add a bunch of nonsense about what the curse is and what it does and other ways it can spread that sound like it should only happen via the supernatural, but nope! Sadako's ghost making out with a dude? This is science right here. Rasen is a terrible movie, but it does have its strong points that, much like Ringu, had the foundation by which you could have made a great sequel. Instead, it ends on utter nonsense with asinine plot points probably lifted from the novel. And as I said, Rasen bombed critically because it was nothing like Ringu. The Ringu and Ringu 2 manga were both adaptations of the movies, so you'd think Spiral would be the same. Sure, kinda weird that they would do a manga adaptation of the film when it flopped so hard that they had to make an entirely different sequel to clear this train wreck, but hey, no reason they had to do an original story or a continuation, so just go back to the well, am I right? Huh, <laughs> accidental pun. But... Uh, sorta on that point. See, the manga didn't adapt the film. They adapted the novel! And I know this because in the original Ringu novel, Asakawa is male and has a wife and infant child, whereas in the movie and subsequent manga adaptation, it's a woman who is separated from Ryuji. The Rasen manga talks about the novel's Asakawa, a guy and his family instead. The mind boggles at the layers of maddening choices with this. The reason you do stories based on this franchise is because of the popularity of the movies. So why are you going out of your way to not only adapt the movie everybody hated, but also to go for the novel's version of things instead of the movies? I don't know, maybe this made sense to the creators of the manga. But basically, all you have to understand here is that this is a sequel to Ringu that has some of the same characters as Ringu 2, but we go off in a weirder, dumber direction. And as as bizarre as Ringu 2 could get, this story is infuriating by comparison. You will understand why they decided to call a do-over with the films after this. And with all that out of the way, let's dig into The Ring, Volume 3, Spiral, and get into the terrible details. Not much to say about the cover to this manga. Naked Sadako that I probably need to censor even though there really aren't any nipples, and with some hair stuck in a wedding ring. Both are shockingly relevant to this story. We open on a flashback to our main character, Mitsuo, failing to save his son, Takanori, from drowning. In the present, we see Mitsuo staring at a few strands of hair taped to the inside of a card. Evidently some of Takanori's that he was able to hold on to as he drowned. Man, how hard was he ripping at the kid's hair if he was able to get strands that long? long when we can see the picture of how short his hair was. In his despair, he holds a razor up to his wrists, but is interrupted from killing himself by a phone call. And here's where I'm gonna give praise to the movie over the manga. Don't expect a lot of praising the movie in this, but it's definitely better there. In the movie, he can't bring himself to do it. Actively committing suicide like that is just not something he can do. But we see no evidence of that in the manga version. Nothing to indicate he's hesitating or uncertain about this. It's just he was interrupted by a phone call and I guess decided not to bother finishing the job. Don't know who the phone call is from, possibly his soon-to-be ex-wife, but he informs whoever they are that the divorce papers came in from his wife. 
this won't bring my son back. And yet divorce usually has such a great track record for resurrecting the dead. I'll do whatever you want. I just want you to be yourself again. Unfortunately, himself turns out to be someone who likes to go streaking in subway tunnels. Another flashback occurs. It turns out Mitsuo was an old friend of Ryuji, who you might recall as the psychic guy who helped Reiko in their investigation in the original Ringu. It seems that Ryuji used to do little word puzzles for Mitsuo to try to solve. And Mitsuo learns that Ryuji is dead, of course from the events of the original story. Mitsuo is the pathologist who will be performing Ryuji's autopsy. Obviously there's no sign of anything externally wrong with him. The cause of death is ruled to be a cardiac infarction, aka a heart attack, and they make some other notes about him as they cut him open. Nothing more prominent than an ulcer. Ryuji. You've lost weight. No kidding! I guess in the original novel, Ryuji was frickin' jacked! No wonder it was so easy for him to lift all that water out of the well for hours. After sewing his body up, Mitsuo has a vision of the stitches popping and a hand reaching out. Spooky. And the movie was technically weirder, as in the vision there, Ryuji actually woke up and sat up on the table. And it actually kinda makes more sense than just a hand reaching out, honestly, because like in Ringu 2, Ryuji's spirit is kinda playing a role in this. The vision is otherwise pointless, save for getting Mitsuo's attention on a scrap of paper in the edge of the stitches. He pulls it out and notices two numbers written on it. Another code game. Huh, Ryuji? Oh no! Sadako's crawled out of the TV and is about to murder me! I better swallow this small scrap of paper with numbers on it that's a clue to a deeper mystery as if I was frickin' Jigsaw! Yeah, this is a stupid, stupid retcon that Ryuji swallowed this piece of paper before he died. Even going by the novel's version of events where it's a heart attack, what would compel Ryuji to do this? And it's even more nonsensical when you realize that he hasn't seen Mitsuo in years and therefore has no idea that he'd be the one to perform the autopsy, so he'd be leaving this clue in his stomach in the vain hope that the pathologist doing the autopsy is someone who would understand it! And it's not that his psychic powers told him, at least not in the movie, because it's established that a psychic cannot see past their own death. Hell, I'd go a step further and say that this code that he leaves isn't even significant or important. It's just there to be unnecessarily mysterious. After the autopsy, Mitsuo is met by police investigator Meikawa, who's looking into what happened. Found any suspicious causes of death? Well, there's one thing we can be certain of. It wasn't an evil videotape ghost. Mitsuo notes that it's weird that they have his time of death down so accurately, and Meikawa says it's just a coincidence. If you'd like, you can talk to Mai Takano directly. She first discovered the body. As a pathologist, it's important for you to talk to a witness in my investigation, even though that's not your job. She's a student of Professor Takayama. A girlfriend, so to speak. A friend who is a girl, but not a girlfriend, so to speak. Also, I'm really happy about this for some reason. So yeah, like Ringu 2, Mai plays a big role in this sequel as well. She's not the main character like there, but it's nice that both sequels at least caught on to the idea of using surviving characters to advance the plot. Even maybe provide exposition so we don't have to have someone go on the same journey the characters in the first did. She is not used in that regard. She is as much in the dark about this as Mitsuo, meaning that the audience is stuck waiting for the characters to play catch up to information we already know. Admittedly, this could still work if this had been intended to sort of stand on its own, be an entry point into the series so new audience members could be filled in, but this is only the second story in the series! If this was a double bill in the movies, that means the audience just saw what happened, and in the novels, the entire reason someone is picking this up is because it's the first sequel to Ringu! Whatever. Mikawa says that Mai originally discovered the body, and Mai informs Mitsuo that Ryuji actually has mentioned him before. Professor Takayama spoke of you, about the code games you used to play in school. He said you were the only one who could solve his code. He kept writing them down on scraps of paper and then eating them from a bowl like it was his cereal. It was weird. Mai describes how she found Ryuji's body. I received the phone call around a half past nine, I believe. I check my watch often. I can pretty much guess the caller based on the time of the day. Every person in my life calls me daily at near specific times for some reason. She says she heard a scream, though that panel frankly looks more like he threw up. Which is understandable because he was trying to shove pieces of paper down his throat. 
Realizing that it kind of sounded like Ryuji, she went to the apartment and found him dead. She also explains that he had no health problems beforehand. Later, Mitsuo decides to take the two numbers and try to work out the code, which is a basic ass, assign letters of the alphabet to numbers no higher than 26. As such, 178136 becomes 17, 8, 13, and 6, aka Ring. Stupid. Yeah, that describes the complexity of that puzzle. Are we sure Mitsuo was the only one who could figure this out? Or was everyone else just annoyed at how simple the puzzles were? Consequently, this is actually a fun moment for me, and familiar to anyone who saw my original Twitter threads concerning the Ring movies back in 2021. Now, the official release of the first four theatrical Ringu movies on the Ringu Anthology of Terror DVDs had this moment subtitled thusly. Bottom of my However, I originally watched a copy with different subtitles, leading to my man Mitsuo summing up the story thusly. Although it should be noted that the movie had a different message rather than ring. It was DNA present, meant to have multiple meanings, and consequently really idiotic meanings. That being said, it was at least more relevant to the plot than just saying ring to Mitsuo, because what the hell is Mitsuo supposed to do with that information? You left this message after death, meaning it was important to you, but how is that in any way helpful? Later at the pathology department, Mitsuo talks to a friend of his, Miyashita, about the results of their test. From what they can tell, the heart attack was caused by a virus that was similar to smallpox. Worrying about the possibility of an epidemic from some new disease, Mitsuo has Miyashita look into how many other victims there are of it. He then has a coffee date with Mai, who informs him that there's something else that's been bothering her about his death. The night of the wake for Professor Takayama, there was a phone call. It was from someone named Asakawa. He said he was a friend of Professor Takayama from school. And by his wake, I mean the exact same day it happened, unless the novel did it differently, but that would be weird given the timeline of events. Also, I'd already met him. And as I said earlier, this is the novel's version of Asakawa. Kazuyuki and not Reiko, just an old friend of his. And he spoke as if he was at his wit's end. You sure Ryuji didn't leave you a message? Like about a videotape? Dear God, woman, do you know what blockbuster video will do to me if that tape isn't in the Dropbox by tonight? I like having my kneecaps! Naturally, they're confused about what the hell this could be referring to, though Mai only knows that Asakawa was researching something with Ryuji. But doctor, what do you think? If the content of a video is extremely shocking, could a person die by watching it? Eh, I certainly felt like I wanted to die after watching After Last Season. Mitsuo has this weird smiling reaction to that, but then asks if she means that that happened to Ryuji. Of course not! He then asks to see her again. Takano, why don't we get together again? I might be able to tell you more about Ryuji's death. Appropriate date conversations. Talking about how your teacher and mentor and possible boyfriend horribly and mysteriously died. Also, I just noticed this, but the artist for the manga, Sakura Mizuki, draws Mitsuo and Mai with the same face, and it's weird and off-putting, and I doubt that was intentional. After Mitsuo has a nightmare about his son drowning, Mitsuo goes to Miyashita to ask about any updates on the investigation. And indeed, six bodies have turned up with the same cause of death as Ryuji. And that includes Asakawa's wife and their daughter. Yeah, in the original novel, both his wife and child saw the ring tape, and were consequently infected not just Yoichi. They initially were believed to have died in a car accident, but nope, they died from the ring virus. What happened to the husband? In the hospital. How badly injured? His body wasn't touched, but his mind's gone. Since the accident, he has totally lost it. It's our convenient way of leaving him out of the story. In the movie, both Reiko and Yoichi were killed in the crash, and honestly, it was really disrespectful of the characters, though it kind of made more sense as a freak accident rather than what they imply here. Anyway, because he was friends with Ryuji, they suspect that indeed, the viral infection idea might not be something to laugh off. We have a flashback to Ryuji's death and his body's discovery by Mai, which consequently does not feature him writing down or eating the scrap of paper. So again, why even bother including that? Returning to his apartment, Mai looks over everything and remembers Asakawa's question about the videotape, finding, indeed, the ring tape inside the VCR. She brings the tape back to her place and watches it. The imagery is pretty much what we've already seen, though now includes a bunch of phantom faces just kind of floating in the air. Not sure what's up with that, unless Carl the Llama is somehow involved with the ring curse now. Now. I'm sorry, I thought you liked faces. Obviously, there's a miscommunication. Also, the Sada word is no longer in an eye, but on a TV screen? 
What's the symbolism there? Anyway, the imagery sickens Mai enough to go running into the bathroom, where she sees Sadako's face in the mirror before passing out. This is not how things played out in the movie as it happens. Mai never watches the tape there. She does see Sadako in the mirror, but it's much later in the movie with a different context. Also, for a sequel to a horror movie, they really did not understand what made her scary in the first film. Like, when the moment occurs in the film, ZOMG! Sadako's behind her! And she looks perfectly normal! Not hiding her face, not doing the eye turned downwards, she's just... like, a regular person. Truly spoopy. At least the manga tried here by doing this highly shadowed grinning face. It's not super scary, but it's definitely creepier than just having her standing there not doing anything. After failing to get in touch with Mai later, Mitsuo is contacted by a reporter named Kenzo Yoshino, who works for M Newspaper. Yeah, that's another weird thing. Some names of locations, like other universities or this newspaper, the manga just sticks a letter in there. It's not really important or anything, it's just a weird translation thing. Anyway, Yoshino was a colleague of Asakawa's and is thus investigating not only what happened to him, but also all the mysterious deaths. He wants to hear Mitsuo's thoughts on the autopsy, who doesn't answer, and instead Yoshino exposits his role in all this and wants Mitsuo to read up on the report Asakawa was writing about these events. I printed out what was saved on the floppy disk. What the? You idiot! This is just his copy of Wolfenstein 3D! No, what was saved on the disc actually has the title of The Ring. The report contains a very interesting story, although absurd. I love how this manga keeps actively telling us how goofy it is. I'd like to hear your opinion, from a scientific point of view, whether something like this could possibly happen. Ah, as a scientist, allow me to save you the trouble. <clears throat> no! It's about a cursed video. Oh yeah, I've seen that cursed video before. If you watch it, you're supposed to die in a week. But then people are lazy and never get around to it. Mitsuo points out that Asakawa is still alive despite seeing it, and Yoshino confirms that's the case, and he even went to the hospital to ask him about it, but the dude is catatonic and won't respond to anyone. Mitsuo asks if he's watched the video, and Yoshino says no. If I did, I would have been on the autopsy table by now. But mostly so I could jump out and yell boo at you, I have a YouTube prank channel on the side. It seems in the novel, instead of his father that the curse was passed on to, this Asakawa went to his wife's parents to try to free the two. Which really seems like it'd be a hard thing to sell to my wife. Hey honey, we need to pass on the videotape curse to your parents so they can die in place of you and our child. Get your coat! For the record, his wife was not in on the investigation. She did not know about any of this, so that's another point for the movie to simplify this. Asakawa's copy of the tape was destroyed in the car crash, and in the suicide note, the parents say they destroyed their copy. What follows is a recap of the events of Ringu, as told through this report that Asakawa wrote, though it seems to be read out loud by Mitsuo, I think, since it refers to Asakawa in the third person. Although maybe Asakawa was just weird like that. It is 19 pages in the manga. Certainly not as long as the recap in the Ringu 2 manga, but still pretty significant. So yeah, recap of Asakawa learning about the four who died, figuring it was a virus they all contracted at once, finding the tape, bringing Ryuji in, his family watches it, they learn about Shizuko's demonstration, Sadako growing up, Nagao murdering her because of the discovery of her being intersex and passing on smallpox to her, and tossing her down the well. They found the body, thinking that meant the end of the curse, which really highlights how stupid this is with the whole it's a virus and not a ghost thing because why would finding her body matter if it was just a disease? Then Ryuji died and Asakawa realized that making a copy of the tape and showing it to somebody else would end the curse. After failing to get in touch with Mai again, Mitsuo decides to head to her apartment. And if there's one thing in common between Spiral and Ringu 2, it's that landlords will just let you into someone else's apartment if you ask nicely. I need to investigate something. Do you mind if I borrow a spare key? All right, please make sure to visit my office later. I want a complete list of all the stuff that's in there that I can steal and sell later. Inside the apartment, Mitsuo can't find anything strange, but then spots the TV. Wondering if the ring tape is in there, he turns on the TV and flips through channels. Three of them are fine, Gundam, Baseball, and Fist of the North Star, but it's the first one that makes me tilt my head. Next is the weather, brought to you by the weather forecast girl. As opposed to who? 
Hello, where do you think I am right now? It's quite incredible. I'll soon die. The Weather Channel in Japan is weird! Mitsuo brings Asakawa's report to Miyashita, asking him to read it as well. What's this? Did you write this? Yeah, I've decided it's time to finally get out of this whole autopsy business and finally get to work on my screenplay. Mitsuo, after stepping away, then says out loud that Mai is missing and nobody can find her. Also, there's this weird thing in the art. When people are smiling in this book, it's really off-putting, and I don't think that's deliberate. Like, they talk about missing people, or epidemics, or dead bodies in police investigations, but everybody's got a big grin on their face. Sometimes it's fine, other times it kind of makes them look smug about something and I want to punch them. It's just weird. Later, the two were at a bar, Miyashita saying that he read the report. The times and dates match all the reported facts. It's not like I totally believe it, but modern science cannot answer any of the fundamental questions anyway. Like, why haven't they made a Pokemon MMORPG yet? You'd think the franchise would be perfect for that. How life began on Earth. Does evolution consist of a series of coincidences? Fucking Magnus, how do they work? Yeah, he just kind of rambles about a few scientific principles and ideas that are much more interesting than this story, but then gets to a point that Asakawa's wife and daughter dying doesn't make any sense if copying the tape and showing it to somebody is the way to save someone. As I said earlier, in the movie, they all just happen to die in a car accident afterwards, and as disrespectful as that is to the character by just shoving them aside like that, at least it's something. The explanation they offer later is baffling when it's basically the same thing as copying the tape. It doesn't make any sense in the timeline of the story, and it doesn't require showing it to anybody. The entire point of copying it and showing it is that you have to be cruel and malevolent to inflict it on someone else, condemn someone else to die in your place, and it's just as evil as the curse itself. In the novel, it's about Sadako's desire to reproduce expressed in the form of spreading the virus. Sure, I find that ridiculous and dumb, the ring virus is your offspring, Sadako? You can't be that desperate, come on. But hey, it's an explanation for it. Why? Oh, why would Sadako undo that and just have them killed anyway? If there's no point in trying to save yourself, then they'll stop trying to spread it. Consequently, this is a major divergent point for the movie, because in the movie, Mitsuo did find the tape and viewed it. And that advances his character arc, and in turn leads to the big reason why I hate Rasen, but we'll get into that later. Miyashita says he'd like to see the tape, but knows that doing so would be putting his life at stake. And one week is too short to solve a mystery. Not if you're Blue's Clues. However, while Mitsuo doesn't watch the tape in this version of the story, he does have visions of the tape, including of the events that occurred in Ringu and his dream's getting weird when Sadako pulls him into the well too, and then sits on top of him. In the movie, when he watches the tape, Sadako just appears in the room with him naked and licks his face, because the movie is weird and bad. We soon learn that Mai is dead, her body discovered stuffed into a ventilation shaft on the roof of her apartment. Mitsuo is of course horrified to learn this, but once he regains his composure, instructs the other pathologists to inspect her coronary arteries for the same effects as the other ring tape victims. However, according to the autopsy report, Nope, she did not die from that. But that's not even the weird part. The weird part is that her body had signs that she had just given birth. No one could find the baby, though they are continuing to search. Mitsuo goes to the apartment roof and stares at a smokestack which resembles a well. Why did my Takano end up here? What brought her up here? Well, presumably whoever murdered her and stuffed her in there. If she was pregnant, where did the baby go? Tell me. Tell me, building! I'm using my telepathy to try to get answers from you! What? Every other character in this series has psychic powers, so I might as well too! On the elevator down, he shares it with a woman holding flowers that he seems to be taken with. Oh, glad you're able to move on from my dude. What with the... two dates you had together and nothing else. Back in the lab, they finally isolated the ring virus in a microscope. Incredible. Zillions of them. Well, yeah, it's a virus. There usually are. According to them, the virus isn't very infectious, and indeed it's very similar looking to smallpox. About a 70% overlap. The remaining 30%? Don't be surprised, but the remaining part overlaps with a gene that codes the enzyme. Enzyme? What kind? Human! Oh my god! There are literally thousands of enzymes in the human body! Could you be more specific? 
I don't know, maybe I'm way off base here and the comments are gonna have a crap ton of people saying, um, there is a human enzyme, Linkara. you're the stupid one. But my BS detector is flashing like crazy. And none of this would even be necessary if they just made it a freaking ghost! Miyashita explains how the ring virus works, how it creates an ulcer in someone's heart that causes a heart attack in exactly one week. And get a friggin' load of this! First, by watching the video, viewers' hearts reach a certain condition. Such condition mutates the existing DNA to the ring virus, a virus very similar to smallpox. Of course! Don't you know anything about- No! I'm not even gonna humor it with the Superman and Earth's end clip! This is freaking dumb! Videotapes alter your DNA! That's what we're going with! The power of magnetic tape, everybody! Batman was right all along! This is why VHS tapes are so bad! You don't get DNA-altering tapes with Betamax, you know? This is why you don't try to provide scientific explanations for supernatural crap, because all it reveals is that you don't actually understand how the science of this works, and you just think it's magic! Or are we just gonna say that the tape contains Sadako's psychic powers or something? Which would add just a new layer of go to hell! You know, if videotapes can alter your DNA, why aren't we using this technology for good instead of evil ghost girls? Hey guys, I can cure cancer by programming imagery onto a videotape, you know? It just alters the cancer cells so they aren't bad anymore! Have the ultimate weight loss technique! It's a special virus I programmed onto a videotape that restructures your body into peak physical condition and then dies out on its own. Feel like you should be smarter? I've got a tape for that! I programmed this tape to alter your DNA so your mental capacity expands. Ever wanted to sprout wings or have heightened canine senses or something? I've got a tape to alter your DNA! Do you want to make more money? Sure, we all do! Well, with my patented DNA altering videotape, I can make your fingers spit dollar bills on command because a psychic lady who died in a well 30 years ago showed us you can make VHS tapes that alter your DNA! In conclusion, this explanation can be best summed up by my man Mitsuo. They found the virus inside of Mai, but are confused that she didn't die from it. That means there are two people who didn't die from the virus. There's got to be something common between them. Or Mai was murdered before the ring virus could kill her! Why do you guys just assume that she put herself in there? Or do you think the ring virus makes you invulnerable until the heart attack? Spoilers! Yes! She was murdered! Oh, but get this! Recalling that Mai had apparently given birth, and the idea that making a copy of the tape saves you from the virus, which, by the way, if this whole thing is just a VHS tape altering your DNA, how the hell does making a copy of the tape stop the virus? What does tape copying have to do with your own infection and stopping the ulcer from forming? that somehow Mai delivered a child of the ring virus and helped it to multiply. Except that makes no sense either, because then any woman infected with it should just automatically give birth to a ring baby! But we've seen several women now all die from it! Mitsuo and Miyashita get together for a weekend trip to investigate something. That virus you saw yesterday. Didn't it remind you of something? Yeah. Yeah? Something I saw somewhere. It sort of resembled spermatozoa. So not only is it magic smallpox that can mutate your DNA, it's also sperm! Sure, why not? Why don't we just say it contains Pepsi too, since we're just spouting nonsense now? It seems they are trying to explain why this didn't affect other women. That Mai was ovulating at the time, so the ring virus changed its target from her coronary arteries to her ovum. But wouldn't that just form an ulcer in her ovaries instead? And even then, as pointed out, somehow she gave birth in a week! Oh, and they say she just fell down the ventilation shaft after giving birth, because I guess she just decided to go up to the roof instead of a hospital! After that bullcrap, they bring up something that'll have importance later. Miyashita went to a bed and breakfast during the summer in a place that had been described in a novel. He wanted to see if there was a mirage in the water, as the novel described it, but it never happened. The idea is that the imagined scenery in a novel is very different from the real scenery in a place. And yet when they read Asakawa's report, they've both seen the same images from it, vividly, even dreamed of it, and both know the details of the well, even though said details weren't in the report. Deciding to look into it, they head to the resort from the original story, and the well that Sadako had been put in. Can I say something stupid? Go ahead, we'll add it to the pile. We may get infected by just reading it. You just... You just spent a good chunk of time 
saying that a videotape can alter your DNA because Sadako's psychic powers somehow did that to the tape, infected it with mutated smallpox. But now you're trying to tell me that just describing the events of the first story is enough to alter your DNA and infect you. Why did Rasen not end this franchise immediately? Miyashita has a moment talking about how much he loves his family, then collapses, expressing how he doesn't want to die. It is honestly more characterization and personality than Mitsuo has gotten in this manga. And that's why this manga is actually kind of worse than the movie, because one of the reasons why I hate Rasen and the movie so much is that it drops the ball hard at the end of Mitsuo's otherwise phenomenal character development. In Rasen, Mitsuo watches the tape and believes that indeed he will die from it. Out of despair for his lost son, he realizes that this is a passive way to commit suicide. And what's more, his death can actually mean something, because he won't spread the ring curse anymore. He happily exclaims to Mai after destroying the tape that with his death, he saved potentially hundreds of lives. The implication being that even if he couldn't save his son, he's managed to save others. This turns to despair later with other plot points, but also he gains a desire to live. Now as we'll be getting into soon enough, they botch this hard in the ending, but like I said last year, what would make the Ring franchise perfect is if it focused on the question, what do you do knowing you're going to die? And Mitsuo's story would have been a phenomenal exploration of that, stupid DNA-altering videotapes aside. Whereas so far in the manga, Mitsuo has just been, huh, this is a weird mystery. Also, my son died, and that's kind of a bummer. They say they'll test for the virus after they get back and then try to find a cure. On the train ride back to his place, Mitsuo spots the woman from the elevator again and tries to chase after her, but loses her in the crowd. And then he comes across her again in his own apartment's elevator. The two suddenly hold hands, they begin making out in the elevator, and then they bang at his place. In the morning, Mitsuo realizes that he hasn't even asked her name, but she ignores the question. Let's go to a movie. I want to watch a movie. Unfortunately, in a poor judgment call, Mitsuo takes her to see Cats. She then refuses to go on a second date with him. After they get back from the movies, Miyashita calls Mitsuo while the woman is in the shower. Where were you all day? I've been trying to get a hold of you. Movies. Huh? Watched three straight. Triple feature in Neil Breen movies. They made about as much sense as this story. Miyashita says that he went to the theater company that Sadako worked at before her death to get a photo of her. I have no idea why he decided to do so, or why Mitsuo treats this as a brilliant thing to do, but what I find interesting is that I guess the letterer of the comic got confused at this point because he calls her Sadako Yamashita instead of Yamamura, probably thinking of Miyashita, and nobody caught that. Somehow this leads to the thing that I already said and I thought they had figured out by now, that it's the report Asakawa wrote that can now spread the virus. Although they say that that is how he survived and not by copying the tape, which is just... No. They say that Sadako influenced him to do so, but when the hell was that supposed to have happened anyway? This is like when A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 introduced a diary that Nancy supposedly wrote about the events of the first movie, even though there's no evidence that she was doing that in the original film. But whatever, Miyashita faxes over a picture of Sadako to him, and it's the woman that he's with, who steps out of the shower. Inside Yamamura Sadako's body that has both male and female sexual organs, the spermatozoa Zoa and the ovum get fertilized. Next, such fertilized egg is released, and the regenerative DNA is replaced with the DNA of the fertilized egg. The fertilized egg, with its nucleus exchanged, is once again returned to the body of Sadako. The memory appears to accumulate in the DNA, and that memory is given to the form of life it takes on. Is this the human condition of madness, Lita? It is. Behold! The Ring Clone Saga! Apparently Sonico can just copy herself if she infects a woman while they're ovulating! And she emerges fully grown and with all her memories intact!
Why even bring up the fact that she's intersex here? Yes, intersex people can get pregnant, nothing is guaranteed, and it's a case-by-case -case basis, but this is based on the goddamn books, where it was explicit, EXPLICIT about her not being able to have a child! That's why we have all the goddamn symbolism about her wanting a baby, and the virus basically being her child, even though that's a whole other dumb thing in my opinion. But apparently you can just replace the DNA already in the egg with Sadako's, so that it creates a perfect frickin' clone of her, and that'll save you from the virus! Even if I bought that this is how this works scientifically, maybe it does, I don't know, and I really don't care, Sonico in this wanted a baby! Offspring! Not just a clone of herself! And even forgiving all that, you can't copy memories! Oh, but lest you think all this insanity is enough, the next narration informs us of this! Once placed inside the body of Sadako herself, within a week, it can come out of her womb and reach the age it used to be. Basically what that says is that Sadako is a clone factory! Pop in some DNA and you get a clone of anybody you want! It's all over in a week too! Her body's made of rubber, I guess, because she can just get pregnant and give birth in a week! No negative consequences makes it easy! The movie handled this in a slightly less insane way. After Mitsuo watched the tape, he had sex with Mai. Since he was infected with the ring virus, it carried over into Mai, but inexplicably, instead of giving birth to Sadako's body, she gave birth to a copy of herself, but with Sadako's memories. Like I said, slightly less insane. Still bonkers, though. We get a brief flash forward to Mitsuo and Miyashita talking about how they're being used by them, but why this is here I really can't say, because then it's just Sadako deciding to give a big ol' exposition dump. She says that she didn't really know all this herself until she read the report too. By my psychic power, information from the DNA is burned onto the videotape. When my Takano watched the videotape, she was fertilized. Oh, well, when you put it like that, it's still ridiculous. She also says that she was able to control Mai's body from within the womb and then discarded her after she was born, treating Mai like a cocoon. She can also feel the virus inside of Mitsuo and... control it, I guess? Sadako, what do you want? I don't know. Just that, in that well, I could not bear to rot away without anyone noticing. I wanted everyone to remember the existence of Sadako Yamamura. Now though, I just kinda wanna see movies. Ooh, maybe I'll start a podcast. After this, Mitsuo has a memory nightmare vision, I guess? Where when he visited Mai's apartment, Mai showed up and apologized for ghosting him, and he expresses a desire to keep dating her, but then he runs into the bathroom and sees Ryuji, bloody and cut open in the bathtub. Mai turns into Sadako and starts laughing. But then Mitsuo's son shows up and he falls into water and he's got the hair from him again. And then Sadako appears and says that using that hair, they can implant DNA from his son into her and grow a clone of said son if he wants. I don't know why we needed the nightmare vision to get to that. Sadako explains that this was Ryuji's plan all along. That's what the ring message left for him meant, and that Ryuji is actively working with her, even though, you know, he's dead, and that is absolutely inconsistent with what happened in the first story, and they're not supposed to be ghosts, except this is a pretty ghost thing to do! In the movie, the same offer is made, but with an added detail that the manga doesn't bring up until afterwards, that she'll only do it if he, and Miyashita, they'll both be cured if they do, helps in spreading the ring virus outwards resulting in more Sadako's getting birthed by all the women who read the report, and, you know, killing all the dudes unless they, like, write up reports or something, but why would they do that? But yeah, basically it's Sadako's final revenge against getting shoved in a well by one asshole, genociding humanity with clones of herself. And in the movie... Well, obviously, he's gonna reject her offer. I mean, even putting aside that she's asking for his help in dooming the human race, Mitsuo's entire arc has been leading to that moment, when he finally accepts his son's death and moves on with his life. We've had so much character development to get to this point. They're not gonna sacrifice the whole narrative of the story and his personal character arc just for him to get his son back and destroy the world. And that's exactly what happens. He agrees so he can get his son back. The world is doomed because he couldn't accept his son's death, and we ignore his entire arc throughout the film. 
Evil wins. The journey was pointless. And that was the final straw for the film for me. The final middle finger that made it the worst of the franchise. It's possible they intended his arc in the film to show him actually being so desperate for his son that it's logical he'd embrace the offer, but that's not how it comes across. He was horrified upon realizing that he may have inadvertently helped spread the curse instead of stop it. His arc had a natural point it was leading to, wanting to embrace life and reject Sadako, that he couldn't live with the evil that she wanted to perpetuate and that he could move on from the death of his son. But nope! Needed to match how it was in the book, I guess. The manga has had so little of Mitsuo's personality or anything resembling an arc other than him kinda sorta missing his son and the brief attempted suicide at the start that... Yeah, I can totally buy this moron deciding to take the offer. You could argue that the movie is worse for failing to live up to the narrative it constructed, but I'd say the manga is worse by virtue of not even trying to have one. But yeah, his son's alive and playing on the beach. I mean, no reason to be worried about him drowning again or anything. You can always just pop out another one in a week from Sadako if you need to, I guess. Oh, but Sadako also decided to take a week to revive Ryuji as well. He says that Asakawa's report will be published as a novel, and the virus will multiply, resulting in more Sadako clones. We're at the front line of the new stage in human evolution. That's totally inapplicable to anything that's going on here. And it's dumb. If all the DNA must be constricted to Sadako, that's death itself. If there's a fatal flaw in a race with no variety, that race will instantly perish. But it was human beings that wanted it. Unconsciously, they wanted it that way. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you forever. Fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourselves, you fucks. There's no race that wants to perish. You sure? And so our manga ends with Mitsuo just kind of shrugging that off and saying he's gonna bring his reborn son to his mom, who he sure will be quite surprised by this. <laughs> Go to hell. This manga sucks. Rasen is the Exorcist 2 of Ring stories. Idiotic, seems to despise what it's a sequel to, and every other movie in the franchise ignores it. Except in this case, it's all from the original author. Some say Sadako 3D and 3D2 are follow-ups to Rasen, but that's nonsense. Basically, that got started because the plot to Sadako 3D is based on one of the novels where the main character is Mitsuo's son, but in the movies, they just happen to have the same last name. There's no other connection between them. Hell, it wouldn't make sense as a follow-up anyway, because at the end of Rasen, Sadako was going on her book tour to destroy the world. It's 14 years later. If it is the canon sequel, then she's really taking her sweet-ass time to enact her clones and genocide of the human race plan. Also, she's a ghost again for no explained reason. But then again, I didn't even know how that works, because this story is so ludicrous as it is, that of course it's revealed than the next book to just take place in virtual reality. But then how can Mitsuo's son be around in the real world in one of the sequels unless that takes place in virtual reality to- Ah, oh, forget it! The story is bad. I've talked about it throughout this review, why it's bad. Questionable science aside, our main character doesn't have an arc. He just kind of blandly moves from scene to scene, reacting to things, and then decides to doom humanity just to get a clone of his son. And the art is frankly really a letdown. Mai and Mitsuo are drawn almost exactly the same. People keep smiling for no reason. The few scary moments that occur are pretty weak and nonsensical. It's just pretty uninteresting to look at. As for its place in the franchise, it's honestly not surprising that after this story basically discarded 90% of what worked about the first movie and only had like two people come back from the original film, that Ringu 2 got made, trying to shove in as many characters from the original as they could, even if it didn't really make sense for them to return to the Yamamura house or the like, and that the plot was so half-baked and rushed in order to get it into theaters as soon as possible and wash away the taste of Rasen. Frankly, it's kind of admirable that they were able to make a decent movie out of that rush. Sure, Ringu 2 was confusing and still has some attempts at science with it, but it comes across more like a, you are way outside your depth and are about to get a Sadako-shaped revelation of how screwed you are. Next time, another adaptation of one of the novels, but it's an anthology of stories with Ring Volume 4, Birthday. And it's gotta be better than this!
I say something stupid? And then he went and spoiled it all by saying something stupid like, I love you. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a quiet little town with her mother and father. She was a happy child, and she loved her mother and father just as all little children do. She knew of some of the more unpleasant aspects of the world, but she didn't care, for she loved her mother and father, and they loved her back. At least, that's what she thought. For you see, her parents did not love her because she was their daughter. They loved her for what they planned to do with her. They worshipped a great and powerful god, and they loved their god more than their daughter. What they failed to realize was that she loved their god more than them, too. Hey kid, we're gonna hit up a Parkins for dinner. You wanna come? That's fine, I finished filming all the reviews. I just need to turn on all the Halloween lights again. Why? Oh, Moarte's all moody about Longbox's 10th anniversary and everything. He wants me to make sure all the spooky decor is still up. Otherwise, he... What is it? That's the magic gun from the Mirror Universe, Linkara. Is it now? Yes. Nimue, set up a level 10 force field around that magic gun now! Nimue! Harvey, step back! Why? What's the big deal? We couldn't find it after Moarte dealt with the Mirror Universe version of me. It has a ghost inside of it, just like mine, which means it's just as powerful. Powerful? I think That's that. an understatement. When you let my Linkara be killed, I was unsure of what I should do. Should I go home, or should I go for this one? Well, it took a few years of thinking while I gathered my strength, and I made my decision. I'm gonna have so much fun tearing your soul apart. <laughs> <laughs>